Burr, 1437, the number one daily Bitcoin pod, crypto news alerts. Let's get it in today's show. I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis as Bitcoin reclaims $30,000. And quoting Max Kaiser, by 2030, the market cap of Volcano Energy and the GDP of El Salvador will both reach $50 billion as we expand geothermal mining and then the price of Bitcoin skyrockets to $1 million per coin. It is a mathematical certainty preach. And quoting Max all the way back from 2013, did I mention how good it feels to be a Bitcoin? Bitcoin millionaire, and FYI, Bitcoin was trading at $46 back then. Also in today's show, breaking news, Sam Bankman-Fried asked FTX attorney to come up with the legal argument for the $8 billion hold. Also breaking news, FinCEN targets crypto mixers over laundering and national security concerns, including Lynn Alden. A lot of people are caught up with bullishness on the potential Bitcoin ETF. Meanwhile, FinCEN is proposing to apply Section 311 of the Patriot Act against basically all types of crypto privacy, including on non-custodial methods. Also in today's show, Bitcoin to usher in a huge push towards $70,000, according to top crypto analysts, as well as I'm going to be sharing why this renowned finance author believes the Bitcoin price is headed to $135,000 per coin. Quoting Rich Dad here, gold will soon break through $2,100 and then take off. You will wish you had bought gold below $2,000. Next stop for gold, $3,700. Bitcoin is testing $30,000. Next stop, Bitcoin, $130,000. 35,000 silver from $23 to $68 an ounce. Savers of fake dollars are effed. Please tell your friends to wake up. Take care. We're word said. Also, Fidelity, one of the world's largest asset managers that controls four and a half trillion in assets under management and currently has 43 million investors using their services, recently published a new research report explaining why investors should consider and buy Bitcoin. I'm also going to be breaking down for you their $1 billion Bitcoin price target along with their timeline we'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market all this plus so much more in today's show massive shout out to everyone in that live chat this is podcast episode number 1437 if you're new to the channel make sure to smash that subscribe button as it helps out tremendously and you'll receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day just like this along with that like button if you gain value out of today's episode and let's dive right into our market watch as we do each and every day let's go as you can see the the entire market back in the green and pumping literally all the major cryptos with Bitcoin up 2% trading above 30,100 at the time of this live stream. We also have Ether trading back above 1600, Solana up 10% trading just under $30 as the pumpage continues and checking out coinmarketcap.com, the current crypto market cap sits at 1.14 trillion up 2% for the day with roughly 40 billion in volume in the past 24 hours with the Bitcoin dominance also on the climb at 51.6 6% with the ether dominance at 17.2% even. All right, now checking out the top 100 crypto gainers of the past 24 hours. We got Chainlink leading the pack up a whopping 16%, trading at roughly $8.90, followed by Aptos up 13%, trading at $5.73, followed by Phantom up 11.5%, trading just above 20 cents. Let's get it. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers of the past week. Virtually everything is in the green. Hex leading this pack up over 40%. Yeah, I apologize with the sound. I have to mess with the settings. I didn't have enough time to mess with it. And I needed to go live and didn't want to miss out. I understand it does sound a little echoey. And this is something I'll play with and fix for tomorrow's show. I had to switch uh, streaming software, if you didn't know. Hence why I wasn't live yesterday, just as a FYI. My um, typical software I've been streaming with for the past four or five years, which is called OBS, I updated it. It stopped working. So I had nothing to stream with. So I had to get a new software called uh, uh, Streamlabs. And it probably requires me rebooting my computer to mess with the audio. And I just didn't have enough time to do so. So my apologies. You caught me slacking. It is what it is. But for tomorrow's show, I, uh, I promise the audio will be on par as I have all the right equipment, just not the right settings. And I have to figure it out firsthand. Kind of is what it is. But nonetheless, at least we get a live show, right? So 
I appreciate the support, fam. Much love either way. Much love, much respect. I appreciate y'all. Y'all the bomb diggity. Anyways, uh, back to our screen here. You can see all the major cryptos pumping in in the green and checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. We're currently rated a 63. In greed, yesterday a 53. Last week a 47. And last month also a 47, which is neutral so there you have it crypto fam how many of you are currently bullish on the king crypto let me know how many of you took advantage of this recent dip i'll let you boy and don't be a stranger this is a live and interactive chat and we will be interacting as the show continues now let's break down our bitcoin technical analysis for the day check out the charts and where the king crypto is likely to go next here we go. This is actually the chart as of yesterday, October 20th, as we tap 30,000. And today, deja vu, we reclaim 30,000 once again as we continue to climb. Now, for crypto analyst Keith Allen, the co-founder of Monitoring Resource Material Indicators, the 100-week moving average at 28.6 was of particular importance, quoting him here. This move is one to watch, but what I'm watching for now is to see if the weekly candle closes above the 100-week moving average, and if next week's candle can stay above it with no wicks below. Some might consider that a confirmation of a bull breakout, but this market is known for squeezes and fake outs, so I'm looking for more confirmation. For me, Bitcoin will also need to take out the prior resistance at 30,500, 31,500, and ultimately 33,000 to call the bull breakout confirmed and validated. So there you have it, fam. And eyeing requires support zones. Popular trader Pintoshi flagged that level of 28.9 as the line in the sand for the bulls to hold. And lo and behold, we're obviously trading above 30,000 at the time of this live stream. And tracking the low time frame market conditions, fellow trader Sku suggested the sweep of late longs can result in an entry opportunity opportunity prior to upside resuming. Quoting him here, I suspect longs are starting to FOMO in here around 30,000. And he also says if this long time frame trend breaks a nice sweep, could be a nice entry before higher. Wouldn't be surprised to see something like this play out. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the crypto analysts. And in an optimistic longer time frame view, trader team stock money lizards predicts that the resistance immediately above 30,000 would soon crack. Uh, quoting him here, 31 to 32,000 will break soon. P.S. Many of you will once more say, but 2020 was after the halving. Here we are before. Answer? Doesn't matter. This year, mass adoption and ETF approval will be the driver. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the analyst. Now, he also referenced the upcoming block subsidy halving scheduled for April of 2024, roughly six months out. Now, quoting the high priest of Bitcoin, the one and only Max Kaiser, he shares, by 2030, the market capitalization of volcano energy and the GDP of El Salvador will both reach $50 billion as we expand the geo thermal mining, and then the price of Bitcoin skyrockets to $1 million per coin. It is a mathematical certainty. And he also shared all the way back in 2013, when Bitcoin was only trading at 46 bucks, did I mention how good it feels to be a Bitcoin millionaire? You do the math, because back then, obviously, the Bitcoin price has surged quite a lot. And that would ultimately mean Max Kaiser is one of the largest hodlers of Bitcoin in the world. So there you have it, fam. Let me know how you like likely feel the Bitcoin price action is likely to go next. Holla at your boy. And a quick shout out to the people in the live chat. You can see it on the screen right there. Shout out to Relaxing Meditation Music, Game Dudes, Will Stop Sun versus Guru, Zero Dollar G Row, Dream Tanks, DCA Bitcoin No Alts, Chris Minka. This is the way to get a shout out and be recognized on the show. So make sure to comment. Also, for those of you not subscribed to the channel, you'll notice if you subscribe, some animation will pop up congratulating the new subscriber. We also added that on Streamlabs. I think we got everything good to go. The last thing is getting this audio sorted out so there's no echo and that it is superb. And that's my goal for tomorrow's show to have everything streamlined and perfect for you. Anyways, fam, let's continue with where we left off and let's break down our next story of the day. And that's the nine or $8 billion hole with FTX and the latest of what's going on with the ongoing saga. Let's break this baby down, shall we? Former FTX CEO Sam Bankman Freed instructed former general counsel Kansun to come up with any legal explanation for that $8 billion hole in Alameda Research books. According to Sun's testimony, October 19th, Sun flew from Japan 
Japan to testify in the ongoing trial as part of his non-prosecution agreement with the U.S. Department of Justice. During his testimony, Sun revealed that he had learned of the billion-dollar hole between the two companies on November 7th after receiving a spreadsheet indicating the debt he shared. I was shocked. Now, asset manager Apollo Capital was intended to receive the spreadsheet as FTX attempted to raise new funding during the liquidity crunch of early November in response to the Apollo inquiry uh, about the $8 billion hole. Bankman Fried allegedly asked Sun to come up with legal justification. And as Sun admitted in his testimony, he had considered some legal options. Among them were dormancy fees and collateral liquidations during the market downturn. But the missing amounts were too large to ignore. Also, the FTX terms of services were clear that funds belong solely to the users. Quoting him here, none of the digital assets in your account are the property of or shall or may be loaned to FTX Trading. FTX Trading does not represent or treat digital assets assets as uh, users' accounts belonging to FTX Trading. Now, Bankman Freed wasn't surprised at all with the circumstances. Sun claimed while the former engineering director, Nishad Singh, was gray like his soul was taken from him. Later on in the day, Sun learned from Singh about Alameda's $65 billion line of credit with FTX. He resigned the next day and over the year after joining the exchange. During his time at the company, Sun relied on Bankman Freed's assurance that funds were segregated to produce legal documents for FTX to answer inquiries from regulators, he told jurors, I've never approved anything like that. And as shared here, uh, <laughs> what do you think of this picture of Bankman Freed with his orange jumpsuit? Let me know your thoughts, fam. Now, what's next in the Bankman Freed trial? Sun's testimony was part of a busy week for the trial. We saw nine witnesses share details of the months that preceded the FTX collapse. Prosecutors are expected to rest their case October 26th, five days away following testimony from two final witnesses. Uh, and now Bankman Freed's defense, however, has yet to confirm if it will bring a case. Bankman Freed is accused of seven accounts of fraud and conspiracy to commit fraud against FTX customers and investors and is currently facing up to 115 years of jail time if found guilty. So there you have it, fam. Things are not looking pretty for Sam Bankman Freed. Clearly, he is guilty, according to all the executives of FTX and Alameda, including Gary Wang and Caroline Ellison. They all knew and say he knew what he was up to and that he was scheming, even though Bankman Free, I didn't know what I was doing. I had all the good intentions in the world. I would never do this to anybody. Tell it to the judge. Just saying, fam. Anyways, I'll be keeping you up to date and posted with the latest updates as they come in. Now let's break down our next story of the day. Something you need to be aware of, and that's Finn Sin and Lynn Alden calling them out for ushering on ethics regulation as well. So let's break this latest story down as we continue climbing above $30,000. Let's get it. And again, if you're new to the channel, smash the subscribe button so you can see the animation come up on the screen. It'll be lit. Let's go. Okay, as you can see here, uh, yeah, I mean, the latest update, FinCEN's goal is to mandate financial institutions to report transactions involving international CBC mixing services with uh, the agency identifying as an acute money laundering and national security risk, notable Bitcoin and Ethereum mixing services using CoinJoin, enable users to combine their transactions, thereby masking the origins and endpoints of the funds. How many of you have used CoinJoin before? Let me know. I even think it's integrated nowadays with uh, some of the hardware wallets such as Trezor. Now, Andrea Gacki, director of FinCEN, remarked that virtual currency mixing services empowers the ransomware ecosystem, ra uh, rouge state actors and other criminals to fund their unlawful activities. Deputy Treasury Secretary Wally emphasized the department's dedication to thwarting crypto mixing utilization by terrorists, cyber criminals, and those evading sanctions. Now, following the Treasury Department's classification of multiple crypto mixing services of the past year, such as Tornado Cash and Blender.io. New regulations were proposed. It alleged that these platforms aided in laundering millions of dollars from hacks linked to countries like North Korea. The federal agency said that Tornado Cash providing mixing services that obfuscated the movement of over 455 million bucks stolen in March of 2022 by the OFAC designated North Korea controlled Lazarus Group and the largest known virtual currency heist known to date. However, advocates of privacy assert the clampdowns on mixers negatively affect ordinary users dependent upon them. Coin Center, a nonprofit emphasizing crypto policy matters, 
lodged a complaint against the Treasury Department concerning tornado cash prohibition in October of last year, claiming it surpasses the Treasury's statutory authority. Now, CoinJoin transactions conceal the user identities by merging funds from varied origins. Such actions can maintain privacy without malicious intent. Nonetheless, FinCEN contends that these instruments are exploited by nefarious individuals. Now, besides Tornado Cash and Blender IO, the Office of Foreign Assets Control has been flagging a handful of crypto addresses tied to alleged wrongdoers. Some speculate that future proof of stake validators and proof of work miners will possess the capability to block transactions based on sanctioned individuals and addresses. The Ethereum ecosystem has been cautious of this complaint blocks over the preceding two years, with 30% of the Ethereum blocks currently complying with their rules. And furthermore, in early Early May of 2021, the Bitcoin mining company Marathon produced the first uh, OFAC compliant block. However, this approach was subsequently abandoned by the mining firm. Now, FinCEN's latest action follows a call to action led by the one and only notorious Senator Elizabeth Warren. And if you want to know how we really feel about her, I'm going to have to uh, point you to Max Kaiser. You got to hear the clip of him talking about Elizabeth Warren. Anyways, they have been pressing the Biden administration to tackle the issue of crypto Illicit financial risk. And now for some words from Lynn Alden. A lot of people are caught up with bullishness on a potential Bitcoin ETF. Meanwhile, FinCEN is uh, proposing to apply Section 311 of the Patriot Act against basically all types of crypto privacy, including on non-custodial methods. So there you have it. Trust nobody. Verify everything. Kudos and shout out to Lynn Alden for bringing this to our attention. So there you have it, fam. Let me know how many of you have used mixing services or plan on using them in the future. And what are your thoughts regarding FinCEN and their continued unlawful regulation against Bitcoin in the crypto market? Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. Now let's break down our next story of the day. I have a $70,000 Bitcoin price target to share from you, uh, share with you coming from this crypto analyst, Kevin Svensson. Let's break this baby down. Uh, Svensson expresses a bullish sentiment on Bitcoin amid the flagship digital asset revisiting four month highs. He shared with his subs in a new video that once Bitcoin converts a key resistance level into support, Bitcoin can then appreciate by about 130% from the current price. Quoting him here, ultimately, once we get above that 32,000 on the resistance and we flip it and confirm it as support, that's likely going to usher in a huge push towards all-time highs, slightly over $69,000 as outlined right here in this chart. Now, according to Svensson, the volatility of Bitcoin will rise once the 32,000 resistance level flips to support. Quoting him again, once we break above this resistance at 32, we'll start re-entering this range between 32 and 70,000. The swings are going to likely start to pick up quickly because you can see from 32,000 to the top, to the low, to the top, these swings are pretty rapid. So once we get above that 32,000 level, we confirm it as support. The swings will likely start to become more rapid. And even if we don't break the all-time high initially at 69,000, I think we're going to see huge volatility above that $32,000 zone, again, as outlined here in this chart. He also seems to predict Bitcoin will rally above 70,000 clearly in the coming years. Fenson says that the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETF could be the catalyst for Bitcoin to rise above 32,000. Quoting him here, if that does happen and we do break above 32,000, just get ready for people to be surprised because I think a lot of the people tend to forget, you know, after this boring sideways range between 25 and 32,000, people always forget that Bitcoin loves to surprise us. Well said. Now, let me know if you agree or disagree with the analysts and watch this video he did. Check the show notes below the video in the description. So there you have it. I mean, we all know 70,000 is only a matter of time as we're entering 2024. And the previous all-time high is 69,000. Even if we were only 2x the previous all-time high for this new cycle, then we're still realistically looking at $138,000 Bitcoin price action. And speaking of $138,000 Bitcoin price action, according to Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the infamous uh, finance top-selling book in the world, he claims Bitcoin is heading to 135000 So let's break this down before I break down the latest from Fidelity, along with their billion dollar Bitcoin price prediction along with their latest report on why you should buy Bitcoin followed by our live Q&A. Again, massive shout out to everyone in the live chat. I apologize for the echoey audio. This is my first time streaming on a brand new platform called Streamlabs. And again, 
Please work with me by tomorrow. We'll be back to normal with ideal, superb all audio quality. That's my goal, fam. Anyways, Japanese American entrepreneur and author of the famous Rich Dad Poor Dad book, Robert Kiyosaki, stated recently the Bitcoin was poised to reach 135,000 after breaking that $30,000 mark. Let's freaking go. Here's the infamous tweet from Rich Dad Gold will soon break through 2100 and then take off. You will wish you had bought gold below 2000. The next stop, gold, 3700. Bitcoin is tested. 30,000. The next stop for Bitcoin, 135,000. Silver from 23 to $68 an ounce. The savers of the fake dollars are effed. Please tell your friends to wake up and to take care. Well, there you have it. Very bold words coming from Rich Dad. And with his recent predictions suggesting that Bitcoin can gain back its bullish momentum if it surpasses the crucial 30,000 level, the crypto community found itself filled with hopes that 30,000 could be sustained. However, at later periods on Friday, Bitcoin then dropped back down to 30,000. However, now it's sat stack on Saturday, and we've recaptured that $30,000 uh, level. He also added that savers of fake dollars are effed, and I would describe that, as Michael Saylor once said, as a melting ice cube. All of your fiat currency in the bank is nothing better than a melting ice cube. And in a different post recently on Wednesday, Kiyosaki spoke on the topic of inflation. He states that inflation has a high effect on the wealth gap, which is the economic disparity between the rich and the rest of the population. Quoting him here, inflation makes the poor and middle class poorer because they work and save for dollars. Yet inflation makes the rich richer. Why? Because today's rich work for and save gold, silver, and Bitcoin. Kiyosaki stated that inflation had a crippling effect on the poor and middle class because they work and save US dollars, making them poorer and unable to accumulate wealth without challenges. I mean, he makes a great point there. In fact, I think we're losing the middle class faster and faster as money printer continue to go. And in contrast, he said that the rich get even more wealthy during inflation because they save valuable investment assets like gold, silver, and Bitcoin, with Bitcoin clearly being the apex predator. This theory holds some weight, seeing that the wealthy usually have more access to financial instruments and assets that appreciate during inflation periods. And I think this is 100% real. And if you think about this uh, for a moment, if you have more money to invest because you're in the wealthy class, then you can buy up all the assets which are appreciated, whether that be real estate property or digital property with more scarcity, such as Bitcoin, which we all know only has 21 million supply, which is a limited, finite, limited supply, unlike gold and the rest of them. And as you can see, we got a new subscriber. Congratulations, Jesus Duno. I appreciate you subscribing to the channel. You got to see that animation in real time, which is awesome. Much love and much respect. Now, uh, before I dive into our main story of the day, I just want to shout y'all out again on uh, YouTube, as well as in the Rumble chat. If you didn't know, we stream live simultaneously on both platforms. Right now, you're looking at the YouTube chat. Shout out to Zero Dollar G Row, James Guns. Feshki, yeah, Billy Bitcoin, what it do the last 10 years for Bitcoin will be repeated at the coming 10 years. We shall soon see. Digital dankness, my man. Shout out to the moderators doing a fantastic job. Also, Bitcoin Maximus, much love, much respect. What up, James? I appreciate you. Said he's saving up all his pennies so we can keep stacking them stats. You got to do what you got to do. You know what I mean? Let's just get it. You know what I mean? Shout out to MJ. Shout out to Kevin Walters or Watson. Good to see you as well, fam. Ambrosia Chocolate Factory. What to do? Passive Income AI. Robert Brady says 70,000 in the coming years is conservative. Absolutely. It's like a no-brainer. I would label that. Easy peasy. And shout out to Nipsey there in the background. You should be able to see him on the on the on the screen as well. He is the official mascot of crypto news alerts. And if you don't know, now you know. Let's freaking go. But anyways, fam, let's yeah, kick it off. Now for our feature story of the day, we have one of the largest asset managers in the world, which is Fidelity, which currently controls over $4.5 trillion in assets under management. They just recently came out and ultimately printed this new report on all the reasons why you should buy Bitcoin. In fact, their head uh, analyst is even predicting a $1 billion Bitcoin price, which officially has to be the most bullish Bitcoin price prediction in history that I have ever covered here on Crypto News Alerts. So without further ado, let's break this baby down. As you can see here, Fidelity manages $4.5 trillion in assets under management. I think they're the second largest in the world next to BlackRock, who controls $10 trillion. They currently have $43 
million investors currently trusting in Fidelity, and they recently published their new research report explaining why investors should consider Bitcoin. Here are the 10 key points on why you should buy BTC. We'll start here. Fidelity finds Bitcoin is the best money. There's no argument there. Quoting them here, Bitcoin clearly possesses a lot of good qualities of money, combining the scarcity and durability of gold with the ease of use, storage, and transportability of fiat. And here it shows you comparing fiat currency to Bitcoin and gold from durable, divisible, fungible, portable, verifiable, scarce, as well as the track record. And I mean, Bitcoin passes it all with flying colors, clearly superior to fiat currency and gold in every component in which you can measure. Next, they share. Fidelity explains the virtuous cycle of Bitcoin. Here's the cycle, quoting them here. This Bitcoin network competition is likely to result in a winner-takes-all scenario as the network grows and becomes more valuable. That's right. We all know Bitcoin is the apex predator and everything goes to zero eventually against Bitcoin, it shows you more users and hodlers, equals higher demand and higher prices, equals more miners, equals higher security, makes it more attractive, equals more users and more hodlers as the circle of life for Bitcoin repeats and continues. Next up, Fidelity compares Bitcoin to the wheel. Quoting them here, the invention of the wheel represented an entirely new tech that once invented could never be reinvented. And similarly, never in human history had the problem of peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash been solved until Bitcoin preach. That's a fact. Next, they share Fidelity is amazed Bitcoin survives. Quoting them here, every minute, hour, day, and year, the Bitcoin survives, increases its chances of continuing into the future. People would probably underestimate all of the negative events the Bitcoin has already endured. And quoting Michael Saylor, Bitcoin is more likely to hit a million dollars than go to zero. Take that. Peter Schiff. Next up, Fidelity provides hard numerical data showing how secure the Bitcoin network is compared to other coins. Quoting them here, in terms of sheer computational power required to alter the network's consensus, Bitcoin far exceeds any remaining proof-of-work competitors. That's right, there are no competitors because as Michael Saylor once said, there is no second best. You know what I mean? Let me know if you can relate. Next up, Fidelity compares Bitcoin to the internet. The internet protocol suite known as TCP and IP is an open source based layer with apps on top of it, which to be built. Owning Bitcoin would be akin to being able to own the base layer of the internet. So how many of you own the base layer of the internet, aka Bitcoin? Let me know in the comments right down below. Next up, Fidelity writes, Bitcoin continues to dominate the market capitalization of all the competing currency tokens, facts, and in fact, the Bitcoin Dominance continues on the rise. We're currently above 51.5%, which virtually means it's a 51% attack on the altcoin market. So the million dollar question becomes, how high will the Bitcoin dominance likely climb this cycle? Can you see 60%, 70%, 80%, potentially 90%? Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. Now for the next point, Fidelity agrees that Bitcoin is useful. It appears at this point, the Bitcoin has found a role in the digital asset ecosystem as a scarce store value asset at the very least. And there they make a good point. Next up, Fidelity concludes Bitcoin should be considered first and separate from all other digital assets that have followed it. I agree. Again, it's the apex predator. And to, to read this entire report by Fidelity, check the show notes below the video in the description. I'll include it for you as I do in each and every episode. Now let's discuss their infamous $1 billion Bitcoin price prediction. That's right. Not market cap. We're talking about price. Bitcoin price achieving Fidelity's $1 billion price target by 2038. That's what we're going to talk about. Let's break this baby down, shall we? Now, Bitcoin, we all know, is the world's largest crypto. We have Jurian Timmer, director of Global Macro at Fidelity. He put forth the notion that Bitcoin has the potential to reach a value of $1 billion per coin in roughly two decades, specifically around the year 2038. And to support his forecast, Timmer employed a combination of models and charts with a particular focus on the stock-to-flow model and his own demand model. These analytical tools form the foundation of his primary prediction which you can see in this chart, it shows you the Bitcoin supply and demand models, which uh, we can go in more detail a little later. The above demand model employs Metcalf's law, and according to this, the number of its users grows linearly. A network's value interference or Bitcoin price grows geometrically. This means that the utility and adoption of Bitcoin are expected to grow more rapidly compared to its network of users, exchanges, ATMs, and participating retailers. Therefore, this model predicted the Bitcoin price to reach the $1 million 
dollar mark by 2030. Let me know if you agree or disagree that we can likely hit that $1 million milestone by the, the top of the decade, which is right in alignment with Kathy Wood of ARK Invest. And in contrast, Timmer's stock to flow supply model noted that the event of significant price surges during each halving event. And consequently, when considering this model in conjunction with other factors, it foresees a price range of $1 million to $10 million for Bitcoin by the year 2030. Now, Timmer's demand model is more inclined towards reflecting the bottom of the Bitcoin price action. But on the other hand, we have the stock to flow model, which seems to provide the better approximation for the peak of Bitcoin. However, it is worth noting that the disparity between these two models widens a lot beyond the year 2030. The reason behind this gap is expected to be the changing value of the dollar as they continue, right? Printing that money. Timmer proposes that the value of the dollar undergoes fluctuations over time when compared to the other assets. For instance, now, if $1 was invested in stocks during the 18th century, its present day value would be roughly $4 billion, right? Now, similarly, Timmer implied that if just $1 million is invested today, it can grow to $1 billion in a span of 20 years. This further revealed that the purchasing power of the dollar has significantly reduced due to factors like inflation and depreciation, aka the melting ice cube. Thus, Timmer's statement implied that keeping a fixed amount of dollars for many years may lead to reduced purchasing power due to the assets changing value. Facts. And over the last few years, an increasing number of companies are taking over the $1 trillion market cap. As a result, it is foreseeable that in the next two decades, the concept of a trillion dollar valuation will become a lot more common so much that individuals themselves can be worth a trillion dollars or more. In fact, who do you think will be the first trillionaire on this earth? Let me know, fam. Could it be Michael Saylor? Could it be CZ? Could it be uh, Max Kaiser? Let me know your thoughts. Maybe Ricardo Salinas. There's so many big hodlers out there. So is this milestone still achievable for Bitcoin? It's the million dollar question. Let's discuss it. Despite Bitcoin's historical growth, it had recently faced significant setback. And we all know, I mean, the volatility will likely continue. You know what I mean? Things go up, things go down, expect more increased volatility. I think that is a given. But there you have it. There's the $1 billion Bitcoin price prediction coming from one of the world's largest asset managers. And again, $1 billion per coin by the year 2038. Let me know if you agree or disagree with Fidelity. And now let's dive into our live Q&A, shall we? Shout out to everyone out there in the live chat. Zero dollar G ropes is easy peasy. Let's go. <laughs> Simple uh, shall attain what it do. Welcome to the live show. Joe Fuentes. So having 100,000 BTC would mean you're worth $100 trillion. And there are people with that much. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? And uh, I think, uh, what is it called? Uh, Michael Saylor's company, MicroStrategy, I think has now like over 150,000 BTC. Uh, GBTC, parent company, Genesis, uh, they control over 600,000 Bitcoin, making them the largest hodler in the world. I believe the US government controls over 100,000 Bitcoin, which they confiscated from Silk Road, et cetera, et cetera. Reverb, that's probably <laughs> the audio solution right there. Like I said, after the show, I'm gonna play with it. I just didn't have enough time and I forgot to test the audio I tested. I was so focused on the visuals and everything working with all of the new layouts and overlays, I completely overlooked the audio in my tests. So my apologies, that's my bad. But nonetheless, we're still here, we're still live, we're making it happen, you know what I mean? Back over 39,000 again. I mean, just a matter of time. Next God candle, $10,000 in a single day, let's freaking go. Satoshi will be the first billionaire. Billionaire, you mean trillionaire. <laughs> Satoshi is already a billionaire. In fact, there are many Bitcoin billionaires. A lot of them are more incognito behind the scenes. But again, you can kind of do the math. If Max Kaiser announced becoming a millionaire back in uh, 2013 on the Kaiser Report, you could only imagine uh, if Bitcoin was trading at 40 something bucks back then, how much he may be worth uh, in today's day and age. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's crazy. Michigan in the building. Shout out to Hoddle Mike. I appreciate the support. What are your thoughts on the new layout and the new format? Uh, please do let me know in the comments. I appreciate it, fam. Yeah, it's exciting times ahead of us, that's for sure. Um, who else we got here? One billion is a magnet. Send it. That's what's up, <laughs> MJ. You are right. Exchanges will always be around. ETFs are for those not able to custody their BTC. And it's crazy because I have an earpiece and I can hear the echo and it's actually driving me a little crazy myself. So again, my apologies. The audio needs some uh, changes uh, on the settings and I'm going to mess with that as soon as the show is over. So tomorrow our audio should be perfect. 
So hold me to that. Uh, pump two, 69,000, please. The audio is messed up, I understand. <laughs> New streaming software, audio settings, I'm gonna mess with after the show. Um, I apologize, I know it sounds odd. I appreciate it, guys. Um, big, big audience, let's go. Yeah, go clean your ears out, I hear nothing. <laughs> Word? Um, <laughs> Fidelity is vested in Bitcoin mining. They know the technology, of course, and they are early investors in Bitcoin. They just didn't announce it till years after, FYI. So they got into Bitcoin a long time ago as well, like many others. Undervalued prediction and <laughs> word driving to the fiat mine. What up? Shout out to Dankness. What up, J Dub the Laker 21 mil? Good to see the fam. What up, Will? Jewelry is tacky. Word up. <laughs> Except you can't make jewelry with it. Word. Uh, currently rolling 500,000 deep on my hodl. Can't wait for the next 18 months. Shout out to Frankie. Congratulations, fam. The amount of Bitcoin to buy on the exchanges is also shrinking. BlackRock, Fidelity, etc. ETS will be the way of the future, says MJ. Word up. Squirrel bait. I know we're echoing. It drives me crazy as well. I mean, I can play with the audio in here. I just don't know if I hit the wrong button, you know. Who knows what would happen? But I actually have my compressor on the same as before. So I have a feeling it's gonna be a setting within Streamlabs. There's a bunch of audio settings. And in order for the settings to change, you have to reboot your computer, which makes it impossible because I can make the changes now, but we won't hear them until my computer reboots. And if I had to reboot my computer right now, that's gonna take me 10 minutes. And who knows for me to figure out the settings properly it could take another hour for all I know. So we're gonna figure it out after the show. And so for tomorrow, again, hold me to it. I'm gonna to try to get the audio perfect. We deserve perfect audio like we had before, 100%. Yeah, man, I mean, it is what it is. It's okay, I'd rather have it this way than no show. Amen, right? <laughs> it's better than nothing. You guys can still hear it, it's just not good. Um, not good quality, I understand. One billion a coin would be 21 quadrillion market cap. Is that even possible? Ask uh, Tay Wei. Anything is possible with Bitcoin fam. Bitcoin has no top because fiat has no bottom. It's just the nature of the beast. Uh, processing word. It could be the processing right here. I have the processor on. What happens if I turn the processor off? You want to hear what it sounds like? Let's see here. What if I turned processing off? Now it sounds like ish, I guarantee you, with no processing. This is probably the worst audio right now. Tell me really quick, how does the audio sound to you? This is without any processing whatsoever. This is with the processing. Processor on. Gets rid of all that background noise. It's just a matter of tweaking the processing with the new streaming software. You know what I mean? But I'll figure it out, I promise you. I think the sound effect is funny. It is, I kind of sound very funny right now. I'm cracking myself up right now. I'm tapped in, stacking sats, got 600 bucks in this maze just to see what it do. Well, word up, do what it do, keep stacking them sats. Remember when I called BlackRock overnight, I see 1 million BTC. Plan when that happens, don't get confused. Shout out to Bubba Fru, what it do? Higher voice, that's right, because it's taking out all the filters. With the processing on, it basically is utilizing all of the filters built into the roadcaster for the pro processing. Like I said, I think it's going to be a matter of changing uh, some of the effects or things within the Streamlabs, which won't take effect in real time until I reboot, unfortunately. It's just how it works, you know what I mean? But it is what it is. Uh, who else we got here? Simon Dale, Reverb Sound. Reverb is on, turn that off. Word, is it as simple as that? If I just turned off Reverb? Hmm, <laughs> let's see, I have a reverb button here. Let's see if I hit this button for reverb and uh, yo, no, I think this is reverb on. You hear the echo now? Now this is reverb off. So you can see the difference. So I don't think it's necessarily the reverb. Let's try, if I turn that off, now it's off altogether. But again, now you're gonna hear all the background noises, the fans and stuff like that. So you gotta have the processors on. It's just a matter, I gotta tweak the processing settings. So don't worry, fam, I got you. Um, I don't care how you sound, just shout me out. Thank you, Lazy Turtle. Preach, I can shout everyone out. 
let's focus on that. <laughs> Shout out to Turtle. Shout out to Connors. Nipsey Crypto Real Do The Real Doge. <laughs> we need to make a Nipsey coin. Is that what you guys are saying? Maybe need to have a sound effect for the Robo Voice setup if we can fix it and use it for Gary Gensler. Well, absolutely, that's possible. I can change my voice at any time, which is kind of cool. For example, let's see. What do we got here? Um, Hi, I'm Gary Gensler. How do I sound? I'm the chairman of the SEC. I'm the sheriff. I'm the HNIC in this mofo. Let's go. So how does Gary sound? Please do let me know. Also, I have the sensor already built in. If I want to say something like you, I can say it. You know what I mean? You, Gary Gensler. Gary Gensler is a just saying. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm prepared. Um, here's a voice voice digitizer. Let's see what this does. Hey, it's Gary Gensler in incognito mode. What's up, guys? I don't want to reveal my true identity because to me, everything's a security. You know what I mean? I'm no clarity, Gary. Let's go. What up, Casey? What up, James? What up, Robert? You like the Gary voice. Good, good, good. You're going to love then on Rumble because I do a lot of impersonations of Gary Gensler on the regular on the Uncensored show. And when the stream officially ends on YouTube, we continue over on Rumble. And that's when I do a lot of impersonations as well as the JV React sessions. If you never tuned in for JV Reacts, I basically have these smart pads on my audio board here. And I typically load it up with 10 different audios. And then I play them and I listen to them. It's really, you know, engaging stuff and then I just react naturally and we've been doing a lot of shorts on the new clips channel which is clips.cryptonewslerts.net uh, so to participate in that make sure to join us over on rumble oh uh, that will be lit you know what I mean sounds like anonymous yeah right that is the anonymous voice of course whoa now that's the Elizabeth Warren <laughs> yeah screw Elizabeth Warren I can tell you how I really feel about her on rumble I can't do that over on YouTube unfortunately just roll with it says Kevin Cortez that's how we do each and every day no complaints. We make it work regardless. I got to get to Rumble. Just go to Rumble. Type in Crypto News Alerts um, or just visit, I think it's rumble.cryptonewsalerts.net. We'll take you directly to the channel. And make sure to follow me. We're on the cusp of hitting 1,000 uh, subscribers over on Rumble. I think right now we have like 970 or 980. So we're getting super, super close. The mic is in the wrong position. Don't point your at your face. Point it to the sky. Well, actually, this is a, a specific type of mic where you're supposed to speak into it this way. But I appreciate uh, the feedback. There's different types of mics, condenser mics, dynamic mics, a whole list of different mics. And this mic I've been speaking this way into since I got it five or six years ago. I've never had issues. I think it's the settings within um, the new streaming software, which I'm using Streamlabs. But again, I will figure it out. So don't worry, fam. Uh, the mic, I mean, it is, got it, says James, uh, guess I gotta go to Rumble. That's right, you gotta get to Rumble. <laughs> if you don't know, now you know. I'll spend a few more minutes here on uh, YouTube. Uh, I can bring back Alvin, Simon, uh, Theodore, and the Chipmunks. But what are you guys most excited about in crypto for the week? Let me know. I think it's exciting that we're back above $30,000. The ETF the news, of course, very exciting. Bitcoin having around the corner, Bitcoin supply shock incoming, Gary Gensler, the rebel, <laughs> aka the devil. Just saying. Yeah, you sound like a robot. Well, that's the point with the chipmunk. Yeah, that mic is uh, good. You are right. The settings are likely the issue. Thank you, Robert. Yeah, I guarantee the settings are the issue because I, I changed the settings. I put it in stereo and I didn't reboot the computer. And then I saw after it requires a reboot for the settings to take place. And it was already four o'clock and I didn't want to miss another show based on technical difficulties because I took the day off yesterday and I feel horrible for that. You know what I mean? I got to get the news in one way or the other. You know how we do. I know you are Bitcoin only, but what are your three favorite altcoins if you had to pick? I would go with, I'd have to pick Ethereum because it's the second largest altcoin in the world, even though they did switch from uh, proof of work uh, to proof of stake. 
since the switch, I'm obviously not as bullish as I once was on Ethereum. But yeah, Ethereum would be a top pick. I think another would be Chainlink, which could be considered the missing link of the blockchain. It's an oracle. It's necessary. Um, you know what I mean? It has real use uh, cases. Another one, I guess, to throw out there would maybe be Polygon slash Matic, which is a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum, because one of Ethereum's biggest problems still is astronomically high gas fees. It has scaling issues, even with the updates, which to me is a little shocking. Uh, but obviously, that layer two scaling solution solves the biggest problem on the Ethereum network. So those would be my three picks if I had to pick. Uh, again, there's no second best. Big Bitcoin is in a class of its own, a league of its own. It's the only truly decentralized coin, and no other coin can compete with Bitcoin as a store of value, not even Ethereum, since switching their protocol, obviously, because Ethereum has no max supply. If you look it up on CoinMarketCap, it shows you the infinity sign. So there is no cryptocurrency with a finite limited supply like Bitcoin that is as secure with the security only getting stronger, the network fundamentals only getting stronger, the hash rate only getting stronger. And we all know price follows the hash rate. You know what I mean? Who cares? Bitcoin is pumping. Hallelujah. Well said. That may be comment of the day. <laughs> Solana, ETH, and XRP is a $0 zero. Tell me why you like uh, Solana, I, I used to like, you know what I mean, be a little bullish on Solana previous uh, cycle. But once I discovered how Bankman freed and a lot of the, you know, venture capitalists were manipulating it, I kind of lost respect for it. And, you know, kind of just is what it is. Like button smash. I appreciate that fam. Much love, much respect. Alvin. That's right. <laughs> the chipmunks. Y'all remember that? The guy is so patient with all of your bad advice. Word. <laughs> JV in the building says tough T. Appreciate that. Would be good to get above 30,000 and hold. I think we can do it. We're on the cusp of returning. We're, you know, tinkering at that level right now, clearly. Thanks. I like ADA, Ethereum, and Link, but now I am slowly stacking sats for the rest of the bear market. Word. Smart move. Uh, appreciate you, Fauge. Thanks for tuning in, supporting the show. Now, without further ado, we're going to continue the uncensored after party with the messed up audio <laughs> over on Rumble. I appreciate all the support, all the love, all the likes, all the thumbs up. Again, it helps out tremendously with the algorithm. So if you haven't already smashed the like, please do so. It means the world. And I hope to see you all shortly over on Rumble as we continue with JV Reacts and Crypto News Alerts Uncensored on the one and only uncensored platform, Rumble. So deuces. YouTube, I am Audi. See you shortly over on Rumble. All right. Uh, the stream should be 